Hey, welcome back to Turntable Guy. On the bench today, we have kind of a turntable. It's a five disc CD player, which kind of has a turntable to spin the discs around. Um, taking a little bit of a risk on this one because um, I could not get it to open in the store. So there was no way for me to test a disc. I powered it on and the display worked. Um, this one is particularly kind of dirty, but I think it'll clean up well. Um, it's a, it's, it's a pretty good model. Um, you can tell it has a nice aluminum faceplate on it. It's not plastic, so um, you can tell it's a, it's a little bit better quality. It's a Yamaha CDC 625. So I'm, I'm thinking it's not like a, a bargain basement model. Um, the back doesn't have a lot on it. It doesn't have a digital output, so you have to put up with the internal DAC. But... Uh, you know, if you're just spinning five discs for background music, who really cares? Um, I'll be honest with you, I do not like five disc changers. I don't like uh, disc changers at all, to be honest with you, um, except the really big mega changers, um, because you can just put your discs in there and leave them forever. But uh, these ones, I mean, you're going to be changing out discs just like uh, any other single disc CD player. I mean, yeah, okay, you can put five in there, but uh, I don't know, do people really do that? Like, I, I never had any inclination to do that, so I, I don't really understand the appeal. Um, they're particularly ugly. They're just one big square box. You can see them from a mile away when you're in the thrift stores. But like I said, I plug this one in. Um, it powers on. The display works. Uh, but when you hit the eject button, it does nothing. So I'll show you that. So I'm going to think it's probably a, a broken belt. I hope it's a broken belt. Okay, so we power on. As you can kind of see, the display did come on. I know it's probably the light, the overhead lights are probably shining right on it. But when I hit uh, open, it says open. And <laughs> look at that. It would not open in the store. That is so funny. Oh my God. Okay, video over. I was making an awful sound. So no, we're gonna open it up. We're gonna we're gonna service it, see what kind of belt opens this thing up. But that is hilarious. So let's see. Hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna hook this up. Let's see if we got some sound. Uh, real quick. Let's see if it's reading a disc. Yeah, it refused to to open up in the store. I kept pushing the button. I tried pulling on the um, on the the front uh, uh, drawer. It, I could not get it to go. And here we are. I turn it on here, and it makes me look like an ass. Okay, let's see if it uh, reads a disc. Let's put it in disc number one. Sorry if that's not in focus. This thing's kind of big. It's taking up my whole bench. Yeah, it read the disc. 11 tracks. I'm going to press play. Oh! I hit play. Oh no, I'm sorry. I hit play exchange. I didn't hit play. Let's try that again. Who's calling? Nobody important. Okay, let's hit play. It works. Go to the last track. Second last track, yeah, no problems. Well, now I thought that was going to be an interesting video, opening it up and repairing the uh, tray and whatever, but uh, could be that it hasn't been opened in you know 20 years. It, it is making an awful creaking noise when it closes. So anyway. Let's uh, let's open it up and see what we got inside. I paid uh, I paid twelve uh, no not twelve ten nine 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 ten dollars for this thing. So for ten bucks, you know I, I think it's uh, it's worth sinking some uh, repair time into, right? If it was twenty bucks, I see these things sometimes twenty bucks, thirty bucks at the thrift stores, and it, it, you just shake your head, right? It's like what are you thinking? You know, thirty bucks. That screw was very loose. Somebody's been in here. 
Now you cannot charge 30 bucks for a five disc CD changer that most people are leaving, you know, in the trash. So, I mean, welcome, welcome to the world of, of thrift these days, right? And uh, the ridiculous pricing in some stores. Doesn't make sense. I also saw uh, this morning from far away when I was going to the electronics section, there was, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, uh, Sony had a line of speakers back in the 80s with square drivers. Um, they're fairly well regarded. And uh, I'm like, oh, that's that's uh, one of those Sony uh, high performance square driver speakers. And uh, it was $7.99, but there was only one. It's unfortunate. It was in pretty decent shape too. Can't do much with one speaker. This thing is filthy, by the way. Okay. Looks like we got a big brace here with a uh, disc clamp. The main board's back here. It's underneath the disc tray. I'm not sure where to start. I'm wondering if I should remove the... Uh, Remove the uh, the uh, drawer uh, face plate. It looks like this is attached. Let's plug it in again and just see how it operates. Just get a basic idea here. Okay, it's looking for a desk. It was not doing this in the store. So it's going to search all five empty slots here. Ooh, this has got some uh, disgusting coke or something there and hair. Mmm, tasty. Maybe that's what was going on. Maybe this was stuck and maybe it shook up pretty good in the car, car ride home here. Mm. Okay. So there's a big track here. And there's our disc mechanism down there. Oh, I see a belt. Is that the loading belt? That is not the loading belt. I have a feeling it's the other belt. It's the uh, belt that's turning this turntable. So if I hit play exchange, oops, no, I won't do that. Can I change disc here? Disc skip. No. Huh, I'm not sure what that belt is back there. It looks toothed. There's obviously, obviously some kind of belt in here. Or maybe it's direct drive. What's this? It's all new to me. It's all Greek to me. Transformer. Yeah, this belt down here does not look... Yeah, it is a toothed belt. Yeah, like a... It's, and it's white. I'm sorry, I'm sorry you can't see it, but it's underneath this. I'm just wondering if I should remove this or if I'm going to... Screw something up. Obviously, when this comes in, it pushes that forward. I remove the spring. That. Just set that aside. Yes, yeah, it's not moving now. Just wondering what this does. Okay, let's take the disc clamp off and. Uh, That is touching. And unplug it. It's all fun and games, right?
All right, better start putting these screws somewhere safe. That's this clamp, spring. There's definitely a disc clamp there. Not sure what this is, to be honest with you. I want to get this out because it's disgusting. I want to clean it. Okay, we'll just set that aside. No damage done yet. Laser. Looks like uh, there's plenty of grease on the rails. We can lubricate the motor for the uh, spins a disc here clean the laser give the oh I see a broken piece of something uh, hang on a sec it's a clear piece of plastic not sure what it is so I found some damage in there don't know what that is it's glass or plastic? It's plastic. I'm trying to figure out how we can remove this. Okay, let's open the tray again. And you can see how that goes up and down. That's kind of cool. Laser focusing. There's that uh, that belt I was talking about. There's a motor here. There's a belt. It's a tooth belt. Interesting. It's not for loading, right? No, it's not loading. It's not for spinning this. And I'm pretty as sure it's got nothing to do with uh, the the drist, this drive. That's back here. I don't know what that is. Hang on, I'm gonna pause quickly. I'm gonna. Let's see if there's a service manual on the Hi-Fi engine. I'll be right back. Yeah, there is a service manual. It's a 1992 model. And uh, I should have known this lifts the tray, lifts the whole disc mechanism up, as you can see here. So that's what that does. Um, and uh, yeah, so to remove this... Uh, To remove the tray, you actually have to, well, once this stops messing around, you actually have to turn these. It says here, to removal of tray, turn the stopper tray pin counterclockwise 90 degrees. Like that. Aha! Interesting. So, turn that 90. Turn the power off. I'm going to unplug it, too. Okay, and that says... Uh, Slowly, okay, 90 degrees as shown in figure six. And slowly remove the tray as shown in, in figure six. Uh, so I guess it just comes out. I guess so. But it's attached. Power, obviously it needs power. So it'll just keep coming out, right? Oh, there's a motor and a belt. Let's uh, let's remove this cable. Uh, 
There we go. And I guess we just slowly keep pulling this sucker until it comes out. Look at that. Cool, eh? Well, how do we disassemble this? Because I want to clean this because it is gross. Okay. Well, I'm go definitely going to uh, blow this sucker out because there's a lot of... Gr well, that, even this belt's in good shape. This is definitely the loading belt. It's in very good shape. Just have a quick look here. Oh, yeah, that's that's fine. Maybe we'll give it a boil. And uh, lubricate these motors and clean these pulleys. Obviously, this is our limit switch here. And this is the the main drive unit here. I don't think we're going to touch that um, other than to blow it out a little bit and give it a cleaning. Um, capacitors. I don't see anything uh, poop in the bed over here. They all look good. The Rubicons and I think Panasonics. Either Michicons or Panasonics. I like the Panasonics. And those Panasonics can have issues um, with a little bit of leakage underneath. you got to keep an eye on that. But these, these look okay. I'll have a closer look at that. Um, but I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take this outside and give it a nice uh, shot with the uh, compressor. And uh, then we'll take this faceplate off, clean it, and uh, I'll be right back. Just before I go blow this out, I just had a quick look at the service manual. And I was looking at, I'm like, how the hell do you get this out? Well, there's a very thin sticker that goes over here, which is not a great idea because you kind of, you don't destroy it, but you kind of bend it a little bit while you're peeling it off. There is the screw for the tray, which undoubtedly releases this. Um, I'm just gonna remember that disc one is pointing back right now. And that gets that off. There you go. It's not a lot to it, but it gives you an opportunity to uh, wipe this down because it's kind of gross. And we got a little motor there that uh, could probably use a little cleaning. You just got to remember that this goes back with the number one in that direction. Just like that. But uh, yeah, that gives you an opportunity to hose this down, which is nice. Okay, I'm going to go uh, blow this out. So I got the faceplate removed. It's just uh, th uh, three screws on the bottom, two on the sides. And then you have to disconnect the connector for the uh, headphone and for the power switch. And they just go, power switch goes there and the headphone connector there. And then a couple ribbon cables for controls and so forth. Uh, they go right there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove all these screws on the back, take off that power switch and that headphone jack, and we're going to give this uh, faceplate uh, a wash that it seriously needs because it is filthy. Um, the trays, the disc tray uh, has been separated and it's uh, being cleaned over there. Actually, it's, it, it's clean, but it's just being dried right now. So that's, that's getting done. And, uh, I boiled the belt, um, turned out decent. Um, it's still got a little bit of a bulge here, so we'll probably end up, uh, that's probably where it sat against the pulley here, right there. So we'll probably move that so it doesn't sit there anymore. And uh, I'll continue on with uh, cleaning, I'll be right back. All right, so uh, I finished up with this faceplate. It turned out really good. There are some, um, some spots on the top here. This is all anodized aluminum, so it's really nice. The inner part is plastic where the buttons are, but uh, I'm going to show you how we can uh, remove some of that. Here's the uh, buttons here. We're going to clean that display too. Um, I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, Plastex polish, and it's perfectly fine for, for metal as well. And we're going to see if it, uh, it can remove those uh, water spots. I think this... Uh, you don't need a lot. I'm talking very little. I think this uh, CD player was stored somewhere kind of wet. Not totally wet, but kind of wet. 
we just want to rub that in and work it into the metal. It should come out no problem. Grab yourself a uh, microfiber and just polish it off. Like if those spots had a long time to sit on the aluminum, they may have stained it and that might be the case here. It's not horrible. I'll try another application. Again, not too much. I'll just do half and, and buff it while it's still wet to see if that helps. It's better. You can still kind of see it there, but uh, in no way is it is it horrible. And uh, you can also do the front of the face plate, especially on the uh, on the plastic glass here. Just give that a buff. That cleans up plastic real nice. And you can do the metal as well. It just does a nice job at uh, polishing the anodized aluminum. This one doesn't really need it. It's cleaned up really well. Just some places where you have that staining. I'm really surprised how nicely this turned out. Remember how filthy it was? That looks great. Yeah, there's a little bit of staining here, so it's not perfect, but uh, we got a scratch here. You can fill that with a little bit of uh, black paint if you want, or uh, I'm not a big fan of using a Sharpie because the Sharpie tends to uh, look kind of reddish when you're done with it. So that's all I'm going to do with this faceplate. That's that's it. Just make sure we don't have any smudges or fingerprints, and we'll just put that aside. And now we'll uh, we'll work on this for the uh, display. Just a little bit of Windex, glass cleaner, whatever you have. Just give that a wipe, clean it off. They're usually kind of dirty and then buff with a microfiber just like that and that's going to be a lot nicer um, i did clean the inside but oh, that's a big fingerprint there i'm going to do it again just a little bit of windex you can use the plastic polish if you want microfiber clean that off just make sure it's dust free and that looks great and now we can put this back together a little bit of a tedious job i gotta say and i think we have to put our power button back first oh you know what i forgot to do i forgot to clean the power button This is the headphone, oh, this is the power button. This is the headphone jack, oops. That goes there. I'll just leave it. Let's see, let's see. Just uh, spray a little Windex on there. Give it a wipe. Power button's usually the dirtiest button. And play and stop. Good enough. Something like that, or did that go like that? 
Nope, not like this. Alright, how would that screw go? There it is. I'm going to reassemble this. I'm sure you don't want to watch me do that. And uh, we'll start on the uh, service of the drive unit. Uh, we're going to clean the laser. The, the uh, rails looked okay when I had a peek at them. They looked lubricated and the, the lubricant looked nice and uh, fluid still. So um, let me finish this up and then we'll get the, uh, the main unit back on the bench. All right, we're going to work on the drive unit. So here's our main drive unit here. Here's our laser, our two rails. Um, here's the gearing. This is where the motor is located. The motor turns this gear, which in turn turns this one, which as you can see, moves the laser back and forth. Um, a lot of Sony's uh, will chew up these gears, especially the main motor gear. Um, so it's important to have a, a decent lubricant here, which there is. I'm not going to touch it. But we are going to put a drop of oil. I'm just going to try to lift this up as much as possible and get a drop of oil into the motor. Because these motors never see any kind of lubrication. And another motor we have to look after here is our main motor. Okay, so this is what turns our disc. And uh, there's a big long shaft there around the side here. Right there, you can see the shaft. So we're going to put a little drop of oil at the bottom of that shaft to lubricate the main, I suppose you could call it the disc drive motor. Just like that. All right, so that's a couple motors lubricated. Now we have the motor that lifts the tray up and down here. That's up down so we have a motor there put a drop of oil there we have a motor that opens our main drawer put a drop of oil there and that's all our motors lubricated now, we're also going to clean the pulley here for where the belt is. Clean this pulley and we'll clean this pulley. Just a little bit of alcohol to clean those. And we'll put our belt back. So clean where the motor pulley is here. And then we'll clean this one here. You see, it just takes off a little bit of gunk. And I just I want to clean the uh, this clamping me mechanism here too. So we got the bottom part. Just get rid of any oils and greases that might sit on here. And the bottom of the cl this clamp is here. And we'll give that a cleaning as well. Doesn't really matter what you use here. Just use a little Windex. A little Windex. Let's give that a cleaning. Okay. Now. Let's do our laser. Okay, now she's the other side of this Q-tip here. Just a little bit of Windex on the tip. Okay, like that. A little bit of blue there. And just give your laser a nice wipe.
and that's good. I'm getting, I'm going to say that this grease is perfectly fine. I am not touching it on the rails with lube. We have, uh, what else? The other motors there. Lubed, 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 lubed. Put our belt back. Right here. We can clean the belt with a little bit of alcohol too. I mean, we boiled it in boiling water, but let's uh, let's remove any oils or contaminants that are on there. That's pretty clean. Okay. Very good. Okay, so next, I think what we'll do is we'll put our faceplate back on. You have to tuck these wires underneath here. You have one grounding screw here for the headphones. Just kind of goes in like that. And our power cable. Two. Data cables there. It's fighting me. I see what the problem is. I'm going to have to do it like this. That's it. The bottom screws on. Okay, I've misplaced the bottom screw. Oh no, I haven't. There it is. Nice. Okay, and uh, there's a couple screws on the side. Uh, 
Go on the side of the faceplate here. Right here. Good. All right. Now our board connections. So first thing is our power cable over here. There's too much crap on my bench. Hmm. The reason I'm saying that is that uh, have I pinched this cable or something? It's supposed to reach over here. I'm only getting it this far. What the hell is going on? What have I done? Uh, let me pause. Let me see what the hell I've done. I'll, I'll let you know what happens. Yeah, the cable is just folded over on itself. Here it is here. But I had to take the faceplate off again, so... Plug it in, and then we have three connections over here on the right side, a couple board connections, our headphone jack connection, which has a ferrite around it. That goes down there, and then the wider cable looks to be going In the back, it's just uh, straight into your board connector here, just like that, and just like that. There, so that, and then there's a ground for the headphone grounds it to the chassis and that goes right there awesome okay I think we're ready to put our drawer back in So here's the drawer, and if you remember, we have to put the number one facing the back, just like that. So it falls into place like there, and there's one screw holding that in, which is this Phillips here. And then there's this weird kind of sticker thing covering up that screw, which is kind of chintzy, in my opinion. Now that I've removed it, it's probably going to come undone. And I'm probably going to have to use some kind of glue. Don't use crazy glue. No, that's okay. All right, so now we're going to insert from the front. All the tracks. We have one cord here, which we really probably should put in first. Just get it fit underneath there. You'll feel when it catches the motor, and just slide it back. And uh, where does this go? I say it goes right here. Like that. Get 
Okay, we'll see what kind of noises it makes when we open it up for the first time, if we've done something wrong or not. Put our two retaining pins in, one and two. And then we're gonna put our clamp back on. Just like that. What do we have here? We had a couple screws at the back, we need a couple at the front. Uh, I don't remember which where. Oh, it's just a bit easier. Hmm. These are metal screws. Yeah, they go in the front. These are plastic screws. Yep. Yeah. Oh, shit. Really? Let's try that again. Holy butterfingers today. Okay, those go there. These go here. I went somewhere. I'll do one here. And a spring. Oh, why isn't that coming back? Okay, let's let's just try something here before we go any further. I have no idea what this is for. It's not moving as smooth as it did. Spring here. Okay. I think I think we're done. that. All right, let's load a couple discs. Get some sound. Okay. 
can be plugged in. Power, turn my amp. Let's just try. More couple discs in number one. And number three. Sounds a lot better. Maybe it doesn't. That doesn't sound good at all. What is going on with that? This clamp sounds like total crap. The beauty of video recording what you're doing is that you can go back and see uh, how you screw things up when you put them back together. This plate here, I don't know if you saw me when I was looking at this thing, I had it, I had put this on top of this area here and it's supposed to slide underneath. That's why this plastic thing goes in and out. Now, it was getting stuck because I had the top, this part here sitting on top of the faceplate. It has to go underneath, and this has to go on top. Live and learn. So hopefully it works now. So it was, it was first of all, this uh, whole mechanism was sitting too high, so the disc clamp wasn't clamping down on the disc. I'm hoping it's going to do it now, um, but that was uh, that was a mistake as well. So, I went back, had a quick peek, and saw what I did. And now, we can put this spring back if I don't throw it across the room. Put the spring back. And it just uh, goes over there. And then under here. Like that. Okay, now let's try this again. Put a disc in one and a disc in three and close. There we go. Now she's working. Let's see here. Play. Okay, let's go to the next disc. So disc skip. Good luck. There's nothing on number two. There's number three. Load and play. It's working. Okay. Open and remove. And when we put it back in, it's not making that god awful sound it was making before. That horrible loading sound. So yeah, I say we're all done. Let's uh, let's um. Go down to the front and have a look at the faceplate. Okay, so there's your faceplate. It powers up, and it's got a uh, it's got an output level here. I wonder if it's just for the headphones. Um, let's try a disc and see what happens here. And we'll put a disc in number four. And, uh, And it's going to look through. There we go. I 
it's up and on four. Okay, so that's working. Now, this output level. Yeah, it does change the output level of the uh, RCA jack, so it's a variable output. It must be for the phones as well, I'm thinking. And let's go skip. Yeah, it's working good. It's clean. It's nice. It'll sell well, I think. Um, I'll put it, probably put it in storage for a little while. Um, I still haven't done the case yet. I'll give that a good cleaning. It's a bit of a mess. But the uh, faceplate cleaned out really nice. I'm really happy with that. Yeah, so it's too bad that uh, the door wasn't a repair. It was just, uh, I don't know, if it was stuck from some... Uh, sticky coke or something inside the tray but whatever it's uh it's working good so that's the yamaha uh what is it cdc 625 a natural sound compact disc player it's a five disc changer um and another one saved uh from the thrift store hopefully uh we can unload this one because i'm not going to keep it for my own personal use but uh i did unload that uh, sony that uh, cdp 292 that i did uh, in the last video uh, I sold that to a gentleman for forty dollars, I think. I paid ten for it. So, anyway, it's uh, it's gone to a good home. So uh, he said he has a, lot, a big CD collection. He's looking forward to using it. So glad I saved that one. So anyway, another one saved, and we will catch you in the next video. Bye.